Welcome to the Create Today podcast. I am your host, Karen Stanley. And today we have a special guest. Um, his name is Mark Ferrelli. Mm-hmm. Right, right. I like it. I know. The, the um, pros of being a professional singer, I had to sing in all of these languages. So <laughs> I don't know what any of them mean, but I know how to pronounce them all. Uh, the purpose of this podcast is to help people create the life that they've always wanted, no matter what shit they've gone through, no matter what challenges, no matter what setbacks. And we want to help people who have been through all of that stuff. We all have been through so many things. And Mark has been through a, a very specific kind of hell. And that's why I wanted him to be here because he has a really engaging, a very inspiring story. I want everybody to hear it. Mark is from Philly. And uh, he's Pittsburgh. most importantly a dad. Uh, oh, what does he say? Oh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, don't say Philly because somebody's from Pittsburgh. There's my first strike. <laughs> Big no, no. Sorry. <laughs> That's all good. It's all good. I'll cut that out. Okay, so Mark Pirelli is from Pittsburgh. <laughs> and uh, most importantly, he's a wonderful father to two gorgeous children and a husband and a business owner and also a first form legionnaire a company that we both love very much. Um, And so, Mark, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me and um, congratulations on the podcast. Thank you so much. And you have your own podcast as well. Yep. Which very quickly, I'm about to relaunch a little differently. Um, And um, I haven't been this, this excited about something in a long time. So I'll keep you posted on that. I'll have you on. It's, it's going to be a very, very cool project. It's going to help a lot of people. So I love Stay that. Stay tuned to that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to share any details of the launching differently? Not yet. Okay. It's being well, built out yeah. right now. <laughs> That's right. Is it going to be a new name or the same name? New name. Yep. Oh, yep. snap. Yeah. Okay. Well, if it's out or if it's launched by the time this show is live, then I will put that in the uh, in the notes. Otherwise, just go to Instagram and find Mark Ferrelli to get all the deets on that because you'll definitely want to listen to those. Um, Mark, I want to start with your life before the, not even going to say the C word, I'm going to say tyrannical lockdowns. What was your life like before that? So my primary business, um, Barback Distributions, we help uh, restaurants, bars, uh, event centers, hotels, anybody with liquor license. Um, We distribute wine and liquor for them. Um, in Pennsylvania, we kind of do things a little differently. So it created a business opportunity 15 years ago for me. So, um, so life was good. Um, as I look back before the shutdowns and whatnot, we'll just call them that, you know, it, it taught me a lot. Um, I was kind of coasting, if that makes sense. I was 13, 12, 13 years into my business. Um, it was good. I mean, I'm not a seven or eight figure business yet will be. Um, but growing up in a, you know, your stereotypical middle-class household, you know, I was, went to public school, was taught, you know, you get, you get the regular job, you get the 401k, you you save a little bit. You, you know, you got to hit that six figure mark. Right. Um, for some reason, I don't know why that's the magical number in this country. Right. I, I don't, I don't get it. Barely, um, you know, barely I know. five or six figures. Anymore. Right. And I, I remember when I first started my business a couple of years in, when I first hit that number in business, I was like, I could not wait to tell my dad, like, yeah, <laughs> for some odd reason. But, yeah, but that's your, what I did. Your, your uh, expenses were seven figures. That's what they don't <laughs> right. tell you. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, that's how, that's how I grew up. Right. And, um, you know, I grew up all the male figures basically in my household were either, you know, police. My dad was a, a cop for 40 years. Uh, medic, uh, military, firefighters. Thank God for all of them. Yeah. So here's me, the little old black sheep running along, right? Um, <laughs> when I was 15, I joined the uh, the fire department, the junior firefighter, right? So I thought that's what I had to do. Um, awesome. Yeah. Well, when I turned 16, it was time to become a real firefighter. I didn't want to do that. Like I had, like, I always had the entrepreneurial bug, right? Like I just wanted to do things my own way. Myself, you know, I was never good working for other people. And I just remember specifically having that conversation with my dad, like, do I really, do I have to do this? And he said, I just remember looking at me going, no, why? 
I said, I just don't, I just don't feel it. I mean, I, I have a long line of firefighters in my family, like a long line. Wow. Um, and that was just like a, a relief off of my shoulders, knowing that I didn't have to go that path if I didn't want to. Um, so that's how I grew up. I go to middle, you know, typical middle-class lifestyle, right? Um, started my entrepreneurial journey at 20 years old, opened up a pizzeria. Um, and it was off <laughs> ongoing from there. Right. Um, but how long did you have the pizzeria, uh, about three years. Um, I just got burned out. I was 20 years old. I mean, my, I would work from nine, 10 AM to 11 midnight and go out with my boys till 4 AM and wake up <laughs> and do it all over. Right. <laughs> uh it was fun to learn uh, that youth is wasted on the young right yes yes so uh, it was great though. i wouldn't change it for anything i learned i learned a ton a ton of what not to do mostly (laughs) so yeah that kind of started my the entrepreneurial journey like i said i was the black sheep in the family everybody else you know did the old corporate thing you know and here i am doing my own thing so um leading up into the you know, the shutdowns, like I said, I had my business, everything's going great, kind of on cruise control, right? Um, no issues with the business, have some good workers, family's doing great. And I remember specifically doing my books for February of 2020. And I remember saying to myself, oh shit, this is going to be a record year. Like we're on pace here. Literally two weeks later, I'm picking up the phone left and right. Like, and I just felt like my world just come crashing, crashing down. Just picking up the phone from restaurant after restaurant. after All all my clients. Yeah. Like, you know, we don't know what's going on. Everybody, you know, everybody's canceling the reservations because they, you know, the word's going around, right. Things were getting shut down. And I remember um, I had a coach at the time and I remember just calling him and, you know, he, he was literally talking me off a ledge. Like, like I was just like, literally I felt the walls closing in. Like, um, but like I said, hindsight, it taught me a lot about my business when things did reopen. Like I said, now it's better than ever because I have new systems processes in place. Um, so during that time, that was March, March of 2020. Right. So <laughs> To add insult to injury, uh, you know, my mom gets sick. She'd been sick for a little bit. She passes in in June. Um, three months later, my grandfather passes. Um, so 2020 was an interesting endeavor. Um, Horrible. I'm so sorry. Thank you. But, you know, everything happens for a reason, right? And it, it's I couldn't see it in the moment. But after the fact, like, had my business not been shut down, I wouldn't have ever been there for my dad. Wow. I mean, I would have been there. I would have been there, obviously, but not the to the extent where I was. Wow. So I, I'm grateful for it happening. Like I really, as bad as it sucked for. And listen, a lot of people had it way worse off than me because of the shutdown. I mean, a lot, I'm not. A lot of people had it way worse off, but looking back, I just find gratitude in the way I was able to change my business when it opened back up. And the way I was able to be there, you know, for my dad and the rest of my family during those um, unfortunate times with my mother and my grandfather uh, during that year. Um, so, yeah. And then uh, towards the end of 20, during the whole that whole time, you know, obviously there's a lot of mental things going on and <laughs> just the internal struggle was was real. Anger. Worst. Yeah, I mean, stress, worse than, fear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was, I did 75 hard during this summer, that summer. I'm sure a lot of people know about that program from Andy. And um, that, a couple different podcasts in the Bible probably saved my life. I mean, during that time. Um, yeah. And if you don't know what 75 hard is, you just search yeah. hashtag 75 hard on Instagram and you'll find it. It's, the best program for mental health, physical health, for discipline. It'll change your life. And Mark, have you done it more than once? Yeah, I've done it like three and a half times, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But literally it's, I specifically remember the night, the day of my grandfather's funeral. I think I was on phase one during that. 
and um a long emotional day and i got home i think it was like 10 30 and i started to do my second workout outdoor workout is it winter yeah oh yeah no it was uh what was that august so it wasn't bad out okay um but still 11 o'clock at night right and i didn't want to do it and um i just remember thinking you know i can't let myself myself down and i just remember my like in my head like if i asked my grandfather what would he say <laughs> he would say get your ass out there and do it <laughs> exactly so, what I was going to say. He'd yeah. say, ass out there and do it. That's right. So yeah, those, that program, like during that time, just, it helped tremendously because it, like, there were some days, Karen, where those were the only five tasks I did. Like, wow. you know, I, I, I didn't have, I didn't want to do anything else, <laughs> you know, emotionally, you know, I didn't have the energy. And so, yeah. So I through all this, too. I think a lot I, of people would get that. I, I, I did a lot of Instagram scrolling, just way too much. Mm -hmm. And it, it's very hard to motivate yourself to do something when everybody's in a frozen state and nothing can be done. Luckily in Arizona, we weren't shut down. That was by the grace of God. Thank you, God. Um, but yeah, we can, I think all relate to those, all of those feelings. And then you have to go through two funerals at the same time. It's yeah, horrendous. It was, yeah, it was not fun. So I remember, I think it was shortly after my, about three weeks after my grandfather's passing, I woke up one morning and I walked into the bathroom and I'm just, I'm literally just staring at the mirror and I felt like I couldn't feel anything, like I couldn't see anything. And this, it gives me chills talking about it every time. I literally felt pressure on my shoulders. Wow. And I fell to my knees and I said, thank you, God, for this new day. And I don't need to this day. I don't, it just came out of my mouth. Like the thought didn't get in my head first. I just, it just came out of my mouth and instantly I felt gratitude just for waking up. And, and I felt on your shoulders, you felt weight pushing you down to your, almost knees. like somebody saying, get on your knees, like, <laughs> Yeah. Somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and from that point forward, like I still, there's some days I forget, obviously, but from that morning forward, I I thank God for this new day. Because how many people didn't wake up this morning? Way too many. You put that in perspective. Just waking up, if you start your day that way, just having gratitude, like you have another as, as shitty as yesterday might have been. You have another opportunity, another opportunity to, to make a difference. And just that one statement, that one realization, that one sentence, thank you, God, for this new day. How did that make you feel after that? It came to you. Mm -hmm. And do you think God told you that? Absolutely. 100%. God put those words into your heart. And then what happened? I stood up, looked back in the mirror and said, let's go. I have another chance wow. and I'm not saying things got better right away, <laughs> um, but they gradually got better as I, I, like I said, I still do it every morning. Thank God for this new day. I got another chance. Some people didn't. I pray for those who didn't um, and just gratitude. I mean, that in my opinion, gratitude is a start for everything. If you can't have gratitude, for things you have now, how are you ever going to expect to get anything else? <laughs> I don't think you will. You know, my it, experience. Yeah. If, if you're only looking at things you don't have, and if you're constant focus on what is wrong, what is lacking, what's not here, what I can't do, then that's a recipe for just pl flat out misery. Absolutely. I mean, we've all been there. We probably had those days and minutes, maybe not months, but we've all been there. We can't think of anything to be grateful for. And so how did you do that? How did, did you, did you feel like you had to make yourself be grateful that, that second? No, at that second, I was just grateful for being alive mm -hmm. after what I just been through the last eight, nine, 10 months. And then from there, you know, I would pick out the obvious. I'm grateful for my house, my wife, my kids. But once you get into this practice, you have to kind of dig deeper. 
and pick out little, like I'll break it down to the ridiculous, right? Like I'll just, I'll open up a refrigerator one day to get a drink or something, you know, start making dinner. And I'll literally be grateful for the refrigerator. Like there are people living in this world in 2022 that don't have a refrigerator or two or three, like I have in my house. Seriously. <laughs> you know, what I mean? <laughs> know exactly what you want. You get, so, you get used to having whatever it is, even things as so like you think everybody has simple as right. a refrigerator, but right. that's not true. All kinds of people don't have electricity right. at all. They don't have running water at all. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think we, as Americans, especially succumb to this, we know we live fat and happy for a long time here. We, we tend to forget what's going on in the other side of the world. We do. Um, we forget how, how good we have it. Yeah, we do. So yeah, I, I kind of, you know, days that I feel kind of, you know, we all have our bad days. Of course. I, I do. I just break it down to the ridiculous like that. I'll just be driving down the road and I'll see, I, you know, I'll be happy for trees and oxygen, like just look for something and just smile. I mean, it, 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 you can change your mood instantly if you want to. Absolutely. So that that's kind of where I took the gratitude thing and, and still do to this day. And I'm not, I'm listening. I'm not perfect. I have bad days just like everybody else, right. <laughs> you know? So, and so when you're having one of those bad days, is that when that does that, is that what you do to yourself? You're saying, absolutely. Nope. Oh, I'm not focusing on everything I have. I'm not being grateful. Absolutely. 100%. Yep. And then yep. that's how you get yourself out of that funk. 100%. Yep. Yeah. That's, one of the, that's one of the things. And for me, um, personally, fitness is huge for me. Um, I, I, I have to work out every day, like almost every day, um, get up and get it done. That's just part of my routine gets me right mentally gets me focused for the day and go on from there 100 yeah. percent. yeah you're listening to this podcast and not looking at mark he's a shit brick <laughs> house <laughs> he's a rookie really shreds and he's a legion effort first for him so obviously his he works very hard on his physique but you're saying it's not about just the physique is it no it's it's all up here it's all up you have to win the war in your mind first to get yourself to go to the gym, to do the things you need to do. Um, it's easy to say you're going to go work out five days a week, but until you actually put the processes in and get there and do the work, that's when the magic happens. Right. You have to drive there and put, get on the bench, put the weights on there. Yep. <laughs> um, so you'd say, I mean, definitely that's been key for your, you know, to stay sane and for, for your mental health and for your. For certain. Yeah. Yeah, full certainly. I because I can I know because I go in and out. So I have these seasons where nine year nine months or two years, I'm like religious. I'm there every day. And even on the weekends, I'm doing something else, maybe hiking. And then the gym is Monday through Friday. And then I fall off the wagon, you know, mm. like after my husband's surgery. I mean, I just there's no reason why I couldn't go to the gym. I was just in in my head and the depths of fear of, Oh my God, is right. he going to stay alive? Is he going to be okay? Um, I could not get myself out of that for a long time. I go here and there hit, I was hit or miss, but I didn't, I totally got out of my routine and I could feel the difference in everything. Every, sure. every minute of every day, I was just like, man, then I feel guilty. Oh, I should have gone. I did have time. Why didn't I go while he was taking a nap and, you know, right. when he was home recovering, and I know exactly how it feels. And then how hard is it to get back into the habit once you get into the habit of not going? Oh, that's right. Yep. <laughs> so much harder than just getting the habit in and then just doing it first thing and getting it out of the way. 100%. Uh, and I know you go super early, four o'clock in the morning most of the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I like to get up, get it out. I hate saying get it out of the way, but you really are. Um, I mean, I'm really just yeah. Some people train at night and that's their, that's their thing. I mean, I got two little kids that doesn't work for me. Nope. <laughs> I like to get up, get there, get home before they're even up, get ready for school. And, and the other thing about it too, which is great is they know where I'm at and what I'm doing. You know, my son will ask me, did you go to the gym today? Like, and now, you know, he just turned nine and he's getting him even more inquisitive about it. Like he wants, he wants, he's like, dad, can we get up at six o'clock tomorrow morning and start doing some push-ups?" Absolutely. So Wow. Monkey see, monkey do. You know, that, Absolutely. set the example for your family. 
they'll follow suit. Yeah, they'll do what you're doing. They won't usually do what you're just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never thought about it that way. I mean, you're really, you're uh, really specifically, uh, you know, one of your motivations is to display the habits and traits that you want to pass on to your children. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Before we go on, I wanted to say if somebody is, has gotten off the wagon, um, is really just frustrated it because it maybe used to work out pretty regularly or something's happened in their life that's kind of just stopped them, stopped them in their tracks and they haven't gotten the motivation um, to go, just go do some physical exercise for their mental health, for their, for their everything health. Um, what kind of advice would you give them? What, what kind of things would you say? How could you help them? I think the first thing that people miss is being honest with themselves. Mm -hmm. And here's what I mean by that. If you're like me, I've worked out my whole life. I have had those peaks and valleys too, right? Like worked out for a year, didn't work out for three months, like all that stuff. Up until about three years ago, since I've been super consistent, I've been like that for 30 years. Be honest with yourself. If you're like that, you know, you can get back in there. It's going to take some time. If you're 400 pounds and ready to make a change, don't go to the gym for an hour and crush yourself. You're going to hurt so bad. You're not going to want to come back. Be you honest with them. Know. Right. Be honest with yourself and where you're at. That that's my number one piece of advice. And what and what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? Be reasonable with those. You're not going to lose 30 pounds in 30 days. Well, you might, but that's probably not the healthiest thing to do. Um, so that's my first piece of advice. Be honest where you're at right this second. Right. Um and That's if really you haven't worked out in five years, go to the gym, walk on the treadmill for 20 minutes and go home. Do that for a week. Do one thing. Next week, go for 25 minutes and pick up a couple of dumbbells a couple of times. I think that the biggest mis problem is people get all gung-ho. They get in there and go, 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 go. And they're so sore. They get so frustrated. And the scale's not moving. Then they quit. Right. So be honest with yourself where you're at. Make a plan. Um, if you're not disciplined enough, um, Find an accountability partner. If you have the resources, hire a trainer. Um, I mean, it's 20, it's going to be 2023. There's, there are resources everywhere. I mean, That's you can just go on YouTube university. You don't have to hire anybody if you don't want. <laughs> everything's yeah. out there. <laughs> yeah. Everything's yeah, out there. All the workouts. So if you don't know what to do, you know, it'll show you what it is. Um, the other thing I was going to add is to that honesty. Um, pretty much every message out there about weight loss is not honest. And it's right. just pure marketing. Correct. All they want to do is sell you whatever they're selling. So they're going to say anything that they know because they've done this for 30, 40 years. Correct. Um, uh, they're going to say whatever is necessary to motivate the most amount of people to purchase whatever they're selling, right? right. That's right. And so like you said, 30 pounds in 30 days. Yeah, you you can technically. It's not going to be sustainable though. Not going to be sustainable. Right. Um, and listen, if you're eating McDonald's five days a week, Next week, just eat it four times. Next week, just eat it two times. Like, don't try to cut it all out at once. You're not, it's not, it may work for some people, but not for most. Um, most take people, baby steps. Yeah, I love that. That's a great right. reminder. Right. Whatever habit you're, you are trying to change, just cut one out, one thing, and right. then worry about the next week, the next week. Just try to do that one thing. And right. then also, sometimes it's not really something you need to subtract. It's something you need to add, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yep. Like uh, water. Yep. Water for sure. Water supplements, um, protein. Most people don't eat enough protein in their diet. Um, but other than that, dude, create the discipline, make a plan and make it a lifestyle. That that's my biggest thing. That's where I've gotten to finally at 48 years old at this point. We're the same age. I can go last night. My, you know, the kids wanted ice cream. We all had a bowl of ice cream. Now, unless I want 75 hard or training for a show or something, of course, I'm not going to eat the ice cream, but I'm going to eat the ice cream and I'll wake up today and just eat regular again. Like, you know, yeah. don't beat yourself up so much. So I think that the goal for most people is it's create a lifestyle that's sustainable. Find what works for you. There are so many diets out there, so many workout programs, you know, CrossFit, weight training, F45, so many. Find one. One will work for you find what works for you and do it.
Yeah. And if those are all intimidating, go for a walk. You don't even <laughs> have to go to a gym. I mean, literally. Sometimes there's nothing better. Out. Sometimes there's nothing better, especially to clear your head. Huh? Especially, <laughs> especially what? to clear your head. <laughs> When yeah. 75 hard for people that don't know, you have to do one outside workout every single day as well as another um, workout. So yeah, that's the beauty of it. It forces you to go outside and uh, it's amazing. That's we all need more sunshine anyway. We do. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially here in Pennsylvania, send some of that Arizona sunshine over here. Right. Over you here. guys need to come down to visit. I'm serious. <laughs> you bring the whole fam and uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> March or October. Those are the two months you want to come to Arizona. It's only like eighty five. Oh yeah, we got instead uh, of one hundred and fifty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for like six months a year, we don't we just shut up. Like we talk, we don't talk about the weather at all. We're all just miserable. <laughs> Go to work and try yeah. to jump in the pool at the end of the day. Try not to die. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's beautiful in, in the fall and the winter. It's it's gorgeous. It. No better place. So come on down anytime. We'll do. <laughs> All right. So going back to um your after your so a couple of weeks after your grandfather's funeral, mm -hmm. how did you how did you go from this this message coming to you? you're really starting to proactively and intentionally notice all good things to be grateful for throughout the day. Then what happened? How did you get this? You made a company. You, you, you have, you have merch. Oh yeah. So the phrase like this new day, like after that happened and I started practicing gratitude, but like the actual phrase, this new day, it actually, it almost started like haunting me. Like I just could not get it out of my head. Like this new day, this new day. I'm like, and this time at this point, it's getting towards the end of 2020, early 2021. Business is slowly starting to open again a little bit. Um, so I remember one day I'm in my closet. I'm looking for a t-shirt to wear, right? I'm in my closet looking through, looking through. And I'm looking at all these other brands I wear, right? And I'm like, finally I stopped and I said, holy shit. There it is. <laughs> merchandise this new day like create the band create the brand send the message so that's kind of how this new day apparel was born um like i said it, the, the phrase just kind of haunted me there for months um so yeah then just you know went to uh, the good old youtube university googled how do you start a t-shirt brand how do you make <laughs> so it's a great time to be alive i mean it's the craziest time to be alive but i in know respect, Anything you wanted to know is available to you in four seconds. Literally, that's how I did it. I, mean, I reached out to other people in the industry too, but literally that's how I did it. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that part. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no idea. You have no information. You have no experience. You have just an idea. You say, I want to be wearing this new day on my chest. Mm -hmm. And so you finally, you figure it all out. Somehow yep. you, you have all this apparel now. You have tons of things to choose from now. Yeah. Um, I haven't, honestly, I haven't been doing much with the brand lately, just because my primary business has been so busy uh, and I was shorthanded for a while. Um, but there'll be some things coming next year, um, new products and whatnot. So keep a lookout for that for sure. Oh. The website's still up. Um, there's still inventory on there. So yeah. Yeah. So thank That's you for it. that, by the way. I saw that right before we got on. Like, yeah. I've been meaning <laughs> to buy these for forever since when the first time we met, which was probably... Was it the beginning of 21 when you were just starting? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. We had a phone conversation. I remember that. Yeah. I was at my son's ice hockey game. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that I love yep. it. So yep. good. So yeah, that's how it was born. It's, it, was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. And I like, you know, wearing the stuff and people ask me about it. And so it's, it's cool. So It's, it's a really, good message. I think that it is a good message and it's an yeah. instrument for you to share that message instead of just having it in your head and going, mm -hmm. you know, this really helps me and helped me get out of the deepest, darkest time of my life is to focus on the, this day that we've been given that a mm -hmm. lot of people haven't. And so that gives you, you're sharing that. That's your, your language, you know, and right. I love that. So people can ask you about it and you can tell them and you can, you can bless their lives. Right. So it's beautiful. Uh, it's Thank wonderful. You. Appreciate that. I think that's the goal, right? If we can make a difference in one person's life every every day whether it's a simple compliment just smiling at somebody they're smiling back 
you don't know what they're going through. That that smile may have just changed the trajectory of the entire day. You know, they may have been having the most miserable morning ever. And you walk into the gas station or whatever and just shoot them a smile and they smile back. You know what smiling does. It changes your whole physiology. Like that could have just changed the entire trajectory of their day just by you smiling at them. You don't, you don't know what people are going through. You don't know. No, you don't. And I believe that. Because I've had that experience where I was in a mood, I was maybe looking down or mad about something or whatever, and a kind stranger held the door open for me and said, hello, or said, thank you so much, or somebody paid for my coffee ahead of me in the drive through that sometimes happens, which is beautiful and brilliant. And it changes everything. One act of kindness to another human being you can change their whole you could change their could change their whole life that's i know it sounds dramatic but right it could but that, that was the other thing about the pandemic that was really tough for me like i'm the type of person that needs this like and not being around people like there were days where i would just go to the you know the stores that we were allowed to go um just walking on home depot i didn't need anything just as be around other people, like literally. Sometimes we wouldn't even talk to people because everybody had a, something on, yeah. but just to literally be around other human beings, honestly. Isn't that amazing that we didn't really understand the importance of that until that was taken away from us? Mm -hmm. I, I was so blessed to be in the wild, wild west where we did have some mandates, but we were just kind of flying under the radar. I remember I went to a store without a mask on and someone came up to me and I thought, oh geez, I'm going to get yelled at, you know? Right. And she was like, nobody said anything about your mask. And I go, no. And she's right. like, okay, I'm going to take mine off too. I hate wearing these things. And I'm like, yeah, take it off. <laughs> so I thought I was, someone was going to yell at me and I'm, I hate confrontation. And I just yeah. like, I just hate breathing my own carbon monoxide. And I just was like, oh, no, well, there you go. I just, it, I just yeah. inspired someone to breathe the air and right. I'm so happy about that. Cause I was right. actually like, Oh, just everybody leave me alone. I just need to pick up a couple things. Right. <laughs> and the ripple effect was you probably empowered them to go do the same to somebody else. I hope so. And on and on and on. So yeah, you have no idea about the ripple effect they may have had. So, right. And the yeah. ripple effect of a smile, the ripple effect of you even just thinking about something that you're grateful for or sharing that with somebody that can right. really change there. Then how many people are they going to affect? Just like you said, right. <laughs> yeah. I love thinking of it that way too, because that really empowers us to do a little bit more of that. But yeah, back in the, when everything was locked down, I think, uh, I hope that everybody like you and I, our experience, we realized the importance of real live community, you know, uh, uh, community of mm -hmm. communication of you know in person of touching of hugging of communication face to face of seeing the people in person that you love um and so i now it's it's the most important thing I've i, I agree on people you've got to be with people you've got to reach out to people i've been i don't know of course you know I, I fail all the time but i've been focused on that a lot more than ever be, before 2020 right no, I, I totally agree. And I feel like without going down too many rabbit holes here, like I feel like there's just going to be this cosmic shift of some sort over the next five to 10 years where I don't even know where it's going to go, but I feel like we're going to get back to more of that. Like I'm not saying technology will go away, but Part of me just feels like it's moving way too fast. Like all this AI stuff, like we need each other as human beings. I don't care how introverted you are. You need other human beings in your life. So I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. We could talk for hours about that, but <laughs> I just feel like there's going to be some sort of, yes, <laughs> some sort of shift somewhere in the next five to 10 years where it's going to be more, let's just say brick and mortar than the other way around. I certainly I, hope so. I and really not, feel that. I really do. Not really even just for my benefit, your benefit, um, but for everybody's benefit, because yeah. we really, really need to be in person and we need people. And if, not, if you did not learn that, you know, in 2020, then maybe you are a true introvert. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> good for anybody, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I'm not yeah. a doctor. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So, 
I love to talk about success and just to, even the definition of that word, because our purpose is to help people create the life they want to live and not the ones we're creating or that we want, right? Mm-hmm. But, and find that thing that they really want to create in their lives. And um, I like asking people who've you know been through a lot of shit, uh, <laughs> how did you used to create, well, you kind of already, you already answered that actually. How did you used to define success? And then how has that changed to today? How do you define success now? Me personally? We want to know. Inquiring <sighs> minds want to know what Mark <laughs> feels. How, does, how do you find success? Because success is used and everybody automatically attaches a dollar amount to that word. Right. And I wonder, for me personally, I used to. Success yeah. is how much. We need. Right. And now the older I get, that's not the definite, that is not success, not just the number in your bank account or the number of Lambos you have or whatever. There's nothing wrong with having a beautiful things or nice things. Right. Um, that just doesn't fit the bill. It's not the only thing that matters. So how would you know if you're successful or not? Success for me would look like, am I providing for my family? Boom. Not only monetarily, but being present um and your kids will tell you that my kids are nine and seven they'll make you hyper aware whether you're not present or not (laughs) (laughs) learn Um, from the children yes um put that phone away believe me my my daughter just told me two nights ago (laughs) in so many words oh hard Um, yeah um so providing for my my family my kids um not only monetarily but being present um, and giving. I can't remember who said it. It was a while back, but it's stuck in my head. And, and I am, this is something like my number one goal in my life is to reverse tithe. Mm. Follow me. To have so much where I can give 90% and live off 10. Love that. Like how awesome would that be? Just to live your life just helping others like and listen I'm going to say this and I'm not saying this just to like I am a natural giver like that's just that's what I do like I just feel like when I'm (laughs) there's days where I grow if I'm feeling down I'll jump online and give to my favorite local charities like (laughs) <laughs> just it just makes me feel better you know like right it makes perfect sense yeah so but when i say give 90 live off 10 you obviously got to have a lot to do that right 100%. so the other side of that success formula is to work your ass off to get to that point where you have whatever seven eight ten figures to do that now, will I ever reach that? I don't know. I'm going to, then I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to bet on it. Yeah. If I was a betting man, I'd say yes. <laughs> but I don't need a Lambo. That's not on my vision board. I don't, I don't need a private jet. I'm all have friends that have that. I can jump on theirs. That believe me, like, I, I like nice things. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that, but, and I'm not people that have Lambos and stuff. Good. For, like, if that makes you happy, great. Like, Love I it. love, I love looking at them. I want to drive one. Like, um, but this is not my thing. But, I'm so scared of those cars. <laughs> I would wreck it. And that's just, just not the my transmission. thing, right? Yeah. If that's your thing, if that makes you yeah. happy, great. Like, oh yeah, get uh, 10 of them. Right. So I don't know where I was going with that, but. <laughs> Definition of success. Oh yeah. Family. So, Am I a good husband, a dad? present financially and then am i giving yes and was there something else in your i think definition of success i think that was it um because yeah. for i mean for me personally anyway like that's if you just focus on a few things it's i'd rather be great at a few than just good at a lot yeah i totally agree so. Well, I also want to reiterate what you said um you said i when i'm waking up and i'm not i don't feel good I reach for something and I try to find something to give. And hmm. And then after that, 
it changes your whole vibe, it changes your whole state. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh <laughs> You know, I, I grew up in the restaurant business, obviously, uh, with my pizzeria, and I, and I worked for the Cracker Barrel for years. But, so having spent, I'm still in that business, really, mm-hmm. I, I tip, like, just crazy. Like, I was like, what are you doing again? Like, so a quick story, we were in, um, we were at Deep Creek Lake over the summer. We go there every year. Mm-hmm. And um, waitress brings us the bill. And I didn't even think about it. Like, it's not something I figured out. I just, oh, I just doubled it. You know, I think it was like 220 bucks. I just doubled it. So normally, like, I, I don't stick around. Like, I don't, I don't need the, the acknowledgement. Like, I just leave. But we're right by the lake, right? So we just leave. We're sitting over there. And the waitress comes over, tears coming down her face. She's like, is this for real? Is this for real? Said, yeah, it's, it's for real. And she gave us both a hug. Like, thank you so much. And she goes on to tell a story about how she had to drop out of med school to take care of her father-in-law because he was in a major accident. And you don't know how much it's going to help me. Like, so going way back to what we talked about before, like, you don't know what somebody's going through. Like you have no idea. Like that little bit of money, I just made her day, like her week, probably. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And even if you don't have an extra few bucks to give somebody else, that's okay. You can give in with time, with a phone call, a smile, like you said, open the door for somebody. You can just do little tiniest little things. So many things you can do. Yep. Yeah. So um, it was it was a cool moment. It was a really really cool moment. Like I said, because normally I don't I don't stick around. I don't need to thank you or the you know none of that. But we were right there. Just the emotion that she let out, and it was awesome. It was really cool. Yeah, um, we had a similar uh, experience a couple of weeks ago with a waitress we see all the time, but we haven't been there in a while, and we hadn't seen her in a while, and so we requested her table and sweetest sweetest girl, um, woman, she's not a girl. And when we gave her her tip, she goes, Oh my gosh, Oh my gosh. She started to cry. And she said, I didn't have any tables for the first like two or three hours of my shift. Cause it was the morning wow. shift, which is really rare. It's a super busy packed restaurant, breakfast restaurant. And for some reason it was just dead. And then she said a prayer she said, God, I'm just going to have faith. You're going to take care of me. It's going to all go work out. I love it. <laughs> We're just all, you know, have tears. Wow. Coming. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely else. love it. I love it so much. Yeah. And, I'm, and like, and we're not sharing those stories to brag, obviously. No. Yeah. To illustrate the point, you have no idea what effect you can have on somebody. Right. I love that. Yep. Well, um, thank you so much for sharing your story. I, I really want to leave with a, one last question of just, when somebody is in the, they, they cannot get out of their own way or get out of that despair or that depth of sorrow, if you have a death of a loved one, of a, of a parent, of a grandparent, what advice would you give them? Uh, first and foremost, seek help if needed. I mean, if, if it really that bad, definitely seek professional help. Um, there's no shame in that. I talk to a therapist once a week. I, it's my personal belief. Everybody should, (laughs) um, we're all imperfect people and we could talk to our friends, but in my opinion, we need that third party who knows nothing about you and it's going to call you out on your bullshit. Um, quite frankly. Um, so first piece of advice is if, if you really, if the thoughts are that bad, please seek professional help. Um, or pick up a phone and call a friend that you know you can confide in, family member or something like that. Um, but then after that, I would say go to a place, when I say a place mentally, a safe place, I should say, because you, you've been happy before. You've had good times in your life before. Mm-hmm. You've had good things happen to you before. So think about those things. Um, and obviously, I'll go back to what I said before, gratitude. Um, Chances are you're sitting in a house in a bedroom. Start there <laughs> under some blankets with your head on a pillow with a full belly with a glass of water sitting next to you on a table with carpet. <laughs> you can just keep going and going and going. Just be grateful. Um, but you mean that literally? Yes. Yes. 
It seems so hard sometimes to be grateful for things, but actually starting out with one thing like this blanket on me, so I'm not cold, the, the right. heater so that I'm not cold or this refrigerator that's keeping my food, food from spoiling. Right. Um, once you do one or two or three, um, four or five and six actually come super. Yeah. Easy. And the other thing I would say is, and I had to do this for a while, stay off of social media. Mm. It's so fake and people, I mean, I, when I post my workouts and stuff, I just hope to inspire people. I don't do it because I think I'm huge or ripped or move a lot of weight. Like, but there's just so much fake out there and it's not going to make you feel any better. <laughs> That'd be the other thing I would say, stay off of there. Yeah. That's really good advice. Yeah. I definitely did an audit uh, recently, you know, just anybody who's constantly negative or mm -hmm. fake or fire brush, what is it called? Photoshopped, whatever, yes. filter, yes. seven filters in. If that's all, I, I'm not interested in that, but I, no. I am interested in the truth and people that are wealthy of, of knowledge, have a knowledge of uh, For sure. knowledge that I can learn some. So I only follow people that I really want to be like, or I can learn from, or um, who are sharing the truth. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Because the truth will not necessarily get you in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> this, that's true. <laughs> Be careful with the people that tell the truth too. <laughs> uh, that's Just true. Uh, this, has been, this has been wonderful, Mark. Thank you so much for taking the time and thank you for being on my show. Um, please Thanks tell everybody. How, oh, of course. Yeah, I really awesome. appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, please tell everybody how they can find you and I'll put it all in the notes as well. Yeah. Uh, it's basically my name, Mark Ferrelli. I think there's an underscore on the Instagram, but Facebook's Mark Ferrelli. Uh, this new day apparel.com is the website. Uh, TND apparel is Instagram. Yeah. Awesome. There. Yeah. He's got great stuff. Great message. Wonderful to wear, to share. And um, I wish everybody uh, hope you, you get some really good things out of this. If you're really struggling, you know, please um, reach out to somebody. And for all the rest of us, if we have a good day, um, I hope this is inspiring you to also reach out to those people. Sometimes, I love that quote, sometimes the people who need the most help are the ones who look like they don't need any. Yep. I love that. Because if we forget, oh, they're good, they're fine, they're always happy. And it's like, you don't really know. And so just no check idea. up on Check up on everybody, all of your yeah. friends, even if you think they don't need any help. I agree. And, uh, yeah, it, it'll be so you'll be blessed for sure. So, Mark, you have blessed us. Thank you so much. Really you. appreciate you. Thank you. God bless everybody and wishing everybody a lot of all the success and all the love in the world. Thank you. Create today, folks. <laughs>